8.5 by 11, one side. Yeah, for the, those who are remote, listening remote to this, to this uh, lecture, you can bring one page, 8.5 by 11 inches, and you can write anything you want on one side. The other side should be blank. <coughs> So we are going to go to test number two and test number three. In fact, test number two is relevant to us. Test number three, only the first question is relevant. So we are going to go through both of them. Okay, test number one. This one, and let me open also the solution menu, the solution for that, which is this one. <coughs> test two. It doesn't open well. Okay. Question number one is something that we have done many times before the, the first test. I'm going to, not going to spend too much time on that because I really want to spend more time on the more relevant, on the more um, recent material. So question number one. Uh, write four node equations. What's this? Write four node equations for V1, for V2, for V3, for V4. Node equations, okay. If we can, right? If we can. We may not be able, may, may not be able to, right? Because of voltage source. So write the, write the whatever you can um, to be able to find the four voltages, V1, V2, V3, V4. <clears throat> One equation is very easy, right? What is V1? Six volts. Easy, right? Another easy equation is V3 minus V2 equals 12. These are two equations which are very easy, right? Now, what other equations do we have? We can write V4 minus V3 over 4, which is the current going from right to left, plus V4 minus 0 over 2, right? Combined in currents, must be 0. So this we, with this, we have three equations, right? The fourth equation is going to come from where? Supernode. So I want you to write the equation for V1, easy, right? For V3, V2, easy, the difference, V3 minus V2. For V4, for this node, and then we're going to do together the supernode. Okay, go ahead. Write the three equations, and the last one will be the supernode. Okay, V1 is 6 volts, right? We're done? Yes? Question, the second one, V3 minus V2 equals 12 volts. Written, done? Question, question number three, V4 minus V3 over 4 plus V4 minus 0 over 2 equals... Zero. Okay? And now let's write the uh, supernode equation.
So the super node is the key thing for this question. So we take the whole thing, right? We take this whole thing as a super node. From this super node right here, we have four outgoing currents, V2 minus V1 over 3, V2 minus 0 over 4, V3 minus 0 over 6, and V3 minus V4 over 0, over 4. Together, they're going to be 0, right? Clear? We understand that? Nice. <clears throat> You want to try the equation for the super node for this one? What do we see? What is outgoing current from V1? Negative 6, right? Negative 6. Why negative 6? Because we are adding the outgoing currents. This is incoming, so it becomes negative 6 this way. What is this current? V1 minus 0 over 6. <coughs> What's this current? V2 minus 0 over 12. What's this current? 4 milliamps. You add them up, you get zero. Here is the solution. Negative 6 plus V1 over 6 plus V2 over 12 plus 4 equals zero. And of course, the 4 is in milliamps as well as the 6 is in milliamps. Okay, write the equation for this super node. It's important because this is going to appear in the test, highly likely. It's not written yet, but judging by previous tests, I love super nodes. Yes? I don't know, but highly likely.
So we have this one is V3. This one is V3 plus 12. This voltage here is, six, is negative 6 volts. You see the negative? Negative 6. This one is positive 12. You see that? Okay. So now, the current from here to here is V3 plus 12 minus negative 6 divided by 2. Here, this, this current, V3 plus 12 minus 12 divided by 2. This current is V3 minus 12 divided by 1. This current, V3 minus 0 divided by 2. And this one is V3 minus negative 6 divided by 1. All together, there must be 0. That's what's written here. Yeah. Yes, you lose points. Because I, re I really want to know that you know what's the voltage. Yeah. But we hope not to lose points, right? Okay. Question three was about operational amplifiers. What is V out? I will go to the solution directly. What is V out for this circuit? No, go this way. It's important that we do it now in class. This is the best way to practice. And I'm glad many of you are here to be able to, to do that. So what is V out? This is five volts. If this is five volts, what's this voltage? Also five volts. What's the current here? Zero, right? Zero current. So, Zero current here, what's this current here? Also zero. If this is five volts, this also must be five volts. Right? No need to, for much computations. So that's five volts, five volts. The current is zero here. It's the same as the current zero here. And so V out becomes also five volts because there is no current through R2. Clear? Look at the solution uh, here. If you want to do it the regular way, it's perfectly okay. 5 minus Vx over 3 is Vx minus V out over R2, which is 3 kilo ohm. But we know that Vx is 5 volts, right? So if you put it in the equation, you get V out become exactly 5 volts. Good. So the second part of the question was about, again, finding I out. What is this current? Again, write the equation. Write the equation of the current flowing from here through the feedback back to the op amp. The op amp can accept current in the output, but not in the input, okay? No current flows into the inputs, but yes to the output. Again, I suggest to do EC3, EC, EC3 was already uh, done, but EC4, EC5 before the test, okay? Make sure you do EC4, extra credit 4 and extra credit 5 before the test, even if they are due, um, at least one of them due later. It can really help.
So no, what is I0? Anyone? How do we do it? The voltage here is zero, right? The voltage here is zero, correct? So what's the voltage here? Zero. Zero. One minus zero over six kilo ohm is the same as zero minus V out over two kilo ohm. But we don't have to do that because if we know that we have one over six, right, going this way, it continues to go that way all the way to the op amp. But I note here, as you can see, is pointing to the right. So if this one is one minus zero over six, this is exactly the negative of that. Okay? You are clear? If not, stop me. Look at the solution. So the the current here is 0.167 from left to right. And because this one goes the other way, it has to be negative 0.167. <clears throat> How do we do this one? In two parts, right? Part one, we solve the left-hand side of the circuit, then the right-hand side of the circuit. So first we find Vx from the left-hand side of the circuit. Once you know Vx, you can find V out based on what you found for Vx. So my question to you now is what is Vx? It's good to do it now. It's really good. If you have a, an opportunity to do it now, just go ahead and do it. Really good. So how do we do that? V1 equals 5 volts. So what's the voltage here? Also 5 volts. Correct? You agree? OK. There is no current flowing here. We talked about it in chapter number 4. So I have 5 volts here. I have 0 volts here. And I have Vx here. What equation can I write? Vx minus 5 over 3, right? Vx minus 5 over 3 equals 5 minus 0 over 2. Again, Vx minus 5 over 3 is the same current that flows down, which is 5 minus 0 over 2. One equation, one unknown, and we get Vx, which is what? 12.5. So Vx becomes 
What's the sign of it? Positive or negative? Positive. Okay? So Vx is positive. So we have here 12.5. What is V out? This is a pure, right? This is V2. Assuming there is no V2 for a second, okay? Assuming V2 is zero. We have 12.5. It's actually simply converting the sign from plus to minus, right? But let's do it. Okay, let's do that. Here we are. We find Vx, which is 12.5. And then we can write, for this particular circuit, we have V2 here, also V2 here. Vx minus V2 over 1 is the same as V2 minus V out over 1. So that's what you get. You get it as a function of V2 because V2 is not given, right? So since V2 is not given to us, uh, we just, it's going to be a function of V2. Good? Question? No? Okay. All right, so now we're going to go to number four. I would like you to do it as is. Just go ahead and do it. And let me know what you got for V out. Always remember the two rules. No current flowing into the inputs of the op amp. And we assume that both voltages the inputs are practically the same, okay? These are the only rules you have to remember. The rest is straightforward. What did you get? Negative two? Yeah. So we simply do the same equation as before. This is two volts, so this is also two volts, right? We have three minus 2 over 1 equals 2 minus V out over 4, which gives you a negative 2, right? Negative 2 volts. Nice. So it's negative 2. What's V out here? What is I1? Part of the question was what is I1? What is I1? Zero. Okay? So don't, remember, don't get caught, even though it says I1, don't get caught when making make an, any error. I1 equals zero. No current flows in. So, okay, so this is two volts. What's the voltage here? Also two volts, correct? I can write the equation. Two volts over 11 is the same as V out minus two over 10. The same current, right? Beautiful. So,
Okay? Should be 3.81 volts. That's what you got? Yes? Okay, good. Going back to this test. Question five was superposition. This is, I remember this question that many students got stuck here. I don't know why. Because all we ask is to take the circuit and write the three circuits, one for each source. That's all we wanted, okay? And of course, finding the current, but. So for each source, you write, you, you put the source itself and you ignore the other sources. How do you ignore the current source? You put open circuit. How do you ignore the, the voltage source? You do short. And then each one is solved separately and combine the results. That's the idea. Yes. What was the answer to? Four C? Three B? Three C. Sorry, I'm sorry. It's hard to hear from here, especially with the masks, um, which I. This one? Yeah. Two times V2 minus 12.5 volts. No, V2 we don't know. It's here. It's unknown. It's an input, but we don't know the specific value of it. Okay. Over R2, shouldn't be equal? Now, it depends how you do it. You can say, for this one, you can say all entering currents equal zero. So oh, for this particular one, it's entering plus entering equals zero. Right? Right. All right, I see. Uh, there are many ways to do it. I'm trying to give you the perspective. Thank you. No problem. So the superposition, in a way, I think is straightforward. The solution that is given here is not the one which I meant. It was solved by someone else. But the idea that what I wanted to do, okay, what I wanted the students to do is not this solution, is another one, which is for each source, you put a circuit, okay? For it so, you have voltage source, short, open. Voltage source, short, open. Current source, short, short. Okay? That's what I meant. The solution that was provided is not the one that I was looking for. But it doesn't matter, it was also correct. And there was a bonus question, which we just we did many of those already. Uh, it's basically a summation, right? This, uh, this one plus that one, the current here plus the current here equals the current in the feedback. We did it last time, and I really want to go to the next test. We have several tests to look at. Okay.
it was in test number three. The first question in test number three. As I remember, yes, the seven in Norton. <coughs> At that time, we had the five tests. So this became part of test number three. And now we have four tests. So this is now in test number two. The idea here is very similar to what we did in class. If you look at it, it's very, very similar, if not identical. So here I ask, what is R7 here? Here I ask, what is I short circuit? Here I ask, what VLC? The best practice is to just do it. Okay, let's do it. What is R7 in? This is case number one. We have only independent sources, right? So we can find uh, R7 in a very easy way. We just open this and shorten that. What's left? Two plus three, right? This was R7 in. If I'm going too fast, raise your hand, okay? I, I just have no idea. So I short circuit. People ask me how to prepare for the test. Make sure you go over whatever we do in class. That's one thing. All extra credit and previous tests. By doing so, you, are, you know the material. A lot of material, but it's, it can be handled. You can, you know. What happens when I shorten the terminals? What happens to Vx? Becomes zero. Now, this is dependent source, so this becomes zero also, which means no current flowing here. So all I have is a short three, two, and four volts. That's all I have. This disappears. So what is Vx? What is short, I short circuit, sorry? Is four over five, right? And the third part of the question: What was it? What is V open circuit? This is the question we did in class. The same question, same question. It's also appeared in the test. Even the same numbers. Do you want? Yeah. I think about it. <laughs> but you see the nature of the question. The nature of the question is pretty much is not changing. It's basically the same same idea. You know how to do it once you're done, right? 
So what is VR, VR open circuit? What's this voltage from here to here? What is this current? Zero, right? When, so this, is de this depends on this current. So there is no voltage here. No voltage here, no current. So the voltage is zero. Okay. We are good with this uh, year. And we're going to move to another semester, 2020. Question number two. And we'll also look at the key. Okay. Here we are. Find I1. Looks easy, but it's a bit tricky, right? Not much. So put a, put a voltage here, Vx, okay? And so this is, v, this is this Vx, Vx over 2 plus Vx over 8 equals 6 milliamps, right? If I do KCL for this, I can say outgoing Vx over 2 plus Vx over 8 equals 6 milliamps. Okay, so now put Vx here, Vx over I1, sorry, Vx over 2 plus Vx over 8, two outgoing currents equal 6 milliamps, right? Actually, plus 6 milliamps equals 0. Outgoing Vx over 6 over 8 plus Vx over 2 plus 6 milliamps equals 0. What do you get for Vx? What did you get for I1? Okay, what did you get for I1? Yeah. Negative 4.8, yes. We know how to do it? Very good? Wonderful. We're moving on to question number two. Uh, sorry, 1B. Find the value of I2.
How do we do that? How do we find I2? KCL will? I did it for the... What? I did it for uh, every node I... Here? Yeah. I can... Yeah, I know how to do it. This one? Good. Okay. Good, okay. You do KCL here. What do you get when you get do KCL here? What's the current going here? Seven milliamps. So now, if you know that this is seven milliamps and this is four milliamps, you can find I2, right? So it's two steps. Step number one, KCL1 and KCL2. Are we okay over there in the back? You okay? Good. You okay here? It's wonderful. Here I ask students to write without solving the equations for meshes two and three only. Switching to the solution. So we have here 2i2 minus i1 plus 3i2 minus 8 equals 0. We agree on that? 2i2 minus i1 plus 3i2 minus 8 equals 0. This is the first equation. For mesh number 3, we have 5i3 plus 4 I3 minus I1 plus 7 equals 0. Agree? Super. <clears throat> Here's another thing. We're looking for the super mesh. This is a circuit that has current source. And we cannot write the mesh for the current source because it's, we don't know the voltage on it. So what we do, we go around it. So let's write the equation for this super mesh. Be very careful with the signs, okay?
Anyone wants to do, to tell us what, what to do it, how to do it? Any volunteer? Go ahead. Minus eight. Minus eight. Plus four times I1, yes. Yes. Very good. Very good. Equals zero. Don't forget the equals zero. That's correct. Um, here is the solution. That's exactly what you said, right? I can read your mind. You see? So, negative 8 plus 4i1 plus 5i3 plus 6i3 minus i2 plus 7i1 minus i2 equals 0. Question number 3. Supernode equations. Write the supernode for equation for part A, for the left, left one. Then we're going to compare notes. I'm glad you're doing it because this is really a perfect way to study. Save so much time. What? Yeah, you can do outgoing. Sigma of all outgoing equals zero. That's very easy. There is almost no, no place to for mistakes. Okay, now do the super node for the right-hand side. The second one is even easier than the first one. Here we are. So the supernode equation is that. 
And we also have to remember that V2 is 18 volts higher than V1, right? V2 equals V1 plus 18. And here, V2 is higher by 12 volts compared to V1, right here. So let's look at the supernode itself. If you look at outgoing, right? We have outgoing is 2, outgoing V1 over 4, outgoing negative 8, outgoing V2 over 6, and outgoing V2 minus V out over 2. This is the equation for the supernode. Um, that's what we asked. We didn't ask for the other equation. And here we have outgoing, 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 outgoing. We have V1 minus 7 over 2, V1 minus 0 over 4, V2 minus 0 over 5, V2 minus negative 8. V2 minus negative 8, right? Don't forget, divide by 3 and V2 over 5. All of them together must be 0. You can see other supernodes here, okay? You can see this supernode is relatively easy to handle, right? We have the voltage here, minus the voltage here, and so on and so forth. This one may look strange in the beginning, but it's not. You just have, you just contain the node that you want, and you see which one, what currents are coming out of it. So in this case, if this is the question you have, you are going to surround the voltage, voltage source like that, and you say, okay, I have one current here, second current here, third current, fourth current, fifth current, and that's basically, if you add them up, basically zero, right? So do it, do it for this one. So outgoing, this is zero volts, right? Zero minus V1 over R1. Zero minus V2 over R2. Uh, zero minus V, sorry, six volts minus V3 over R3. Six volts minus V4 over R4. Six volts minus V5 over R5 equals zero. And of course here, V2 is higher by 16 volts compared to V1. Is that good? Um, yes. Which one? Correct. Very nice. I'm glad that you saw it. But here what we did is it, the answer is correct. I'll tell you why. Usually we did outgoing, 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 outgoing. What we did here is incoming, 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 incoming. So it's the same idea, right? But if you do outgoing, you're absolutely right. So we have incoming plus incoming plus incoming plus incoming plus incoming. That's what you see here. 
But if you do outgoing, you're right. It should be negative. Good. Thanks. Okay. Something for you, for fun. Now that you're an expert. This one. Find V out. We have a resistor here. What should we do with this resistor? Does this resistor bother you? It should not, because there is no current here. Right? There is no current here. So if this is 2 volts, this is also 2 volts. Very important. Many times we think, wow, there is a resistor, there must be some voltage. No, there is no voltage on this resistor. There is no current here. So this resistor does not see any difference in voltages on both sides. So this is 2 volts. This is also 2 volts. OK? It goes back to the rules. No current to the inputs. Once you see that, the rest is pretty much what we did in the past. So this is 2 volts. This is also 2 volts. And you can write the equation V out minus 2 volts over 4 is the same as 2 volts minus 0 over 8. OK? You did it? Almost? Find V out. This is a summation, right? Weighted summation. Not only that, it's also inverting. So it's a weighted summation and plus inverting. Here is the inversion. So we have 2 over 4 times 2, 2 over 5 times 3, 2 over 6 times 4. All together will give you negative 3.53. Now, you can do it this way because we know the formula for that. But you can also go with the regular uh, summation of currents, right? You can say 2 minus 0 over 4 plus 3 minus 0 over 5 plus 4 minus 0 over 6 
equals zero minus V out over two. You get the same result. Either way will be fine with me. Okay? Ah, question five is nice, okay. Question five is right here. We have here 20 kilo ohm in parallel. We have 10 kilo ohm right here connected to the output. How do we handle this? Let me ask you questions. To what degree the 20 kilo ohm bothers us? It doesn't, right? If this is two volts, this is two volts. That's all I need to know. The fact that there is current flowing here, it doesn't make any difference, right? The voltage here is two volts. What about this 10 kilo ohm? It's kind of flowing, but I don't care because I know that this is V out. I can write the equation without the 10 kilo ohm. So both 20 kilo ohm and the 10 kilo ohm do not bother me. Add the equation. The sign will come up by itself. Okay. okay. So in this case, in this case, uh, you said that I did the I did the other way. The way is what all the the current. I added all the current. Perfect. And then I said that current is equal to. Uh, it will be. You said it will be zero minus v out over two kilo ohm. Correct. That's because uh, the current are not going. The, that way. All the currents are going to go in the same direction, right? Yeah. These three currents, if you add all these three currents here, they're going to continue to flow here. Right. Yeah. So the addition of all these three currents, one, two, and three, if you add them up, they have no place to go just to go this way. Right. So the summation of all these three currents must be this current. Right. Yeah. So in that, that's how I know it will be uh, the voltage on this side minus the voltage on the other side. Zero minus zero. Yeah. So the 10 kilo ohm and 20 kilo ohm do not bother us. In, for us to find the V out, we don't really, it doesn't matter for us. So we have uh, basically five volts in the output. If that's what you got, you're okay. okay. And 5B was very similar to the previous one we did. Um, not really a big deal. I want to go to test number three from that semester, which has something about uh, Norton and Thevenin, because I want to make sure that you see it as well. Superposition. And then, seven in. So these two things, 
We want to up, 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 up. Here we are. I want to not only to put the circuits, but also solve. Okay. Draw the superposition circuits for that particular circuit. And then find the first I1 and then the second I1. And then we're going to add, add the results. For some myst mystery that I cannot know, I don't even know yet why people uh, get stuck in superposition, but that's why we're going to do several different, or we did already, we'll continue to do several different questions that um, obviously will help. So drawing the circuit is straightforward, right? Short circuit for voltage source, open circuit for current source, when you want to ignore them, and then you have two circuits. These kind of questions are clear how to do them, but they may take time. If I ask you to solve, it may take some time to find out the first current, the second current, okay? What you see is a shortcut, um, but the best way to do it is the KCL or KVL, right? Okay, I want to f make sure that you have another question also. I don't want to miss any question. So make sure you solve it when you prepare for this test, okay? Okay, you don't, I prefer that you, we, we move on with the question, but I want to make sure that you solve this problem, okay? I want to f you to find V open circuit. So we remove the load, right? We remove the load and try to find V open circuit.
I love these kind of questions. Big hint, right? So this kind of question appear in test. Straightforward. Not exactly the same question, but VOC, ISC, R7 in. It allows you to see if you, to what degree you understand the material. How can you find VOC? Okay, so we remove the load, right? If this is um, the voltage we are looking for, what is this voltage compared to this one? This one is six volts less than this. So we have some, we, we know already that this is VOC minus six, right? So VOC minus six divided by three kilo ohm, which is one plus two, right? Plus minus four milliamps. So I have this current, I have this current, I have this current, is a function of V. I have the six volts. What can I do? How can, what kind of equation I can write? I can go with a, with a, um, KVL right here. We can do KVL for this one. That's one way. There are many ways to do it. You can do KVL. You can do this. Yeah. No, no. Okay. There is no current flowing here, right? right? So all the four milliamps is going to flow to this way. So the voltage. This one is VOC minus six. So VOC is six plus VX. But VX itself is four times three. So it gives you eighteen. There are many different ways of doing it. And yes, I'm glad we can also do this uh, because that's a question that uh, finding R7 in. We have three minutes to do it and it's more than enough. Then it's more than enough. We have only independent sources, so you can replace the voltage source by short. Redrawing helps. And you replace this one by short, and this one is open. So what do you see from when you look from right to left? You see 15 in parallel with 30. Correct? This 30, 10 plus 20 is in parallel with the 15, which gives you 10 kilo ohm. So I'm glad that you were um, pretty much up to date with all these questions and you know how to do it. I'm very glad and wish you lots of success. Back to your question, how many, how many questions? Probably five. That's my style usually. And um, 
You saw the style. You, if you just know what we are doing in the last two tests, plus the PowerPoint, plus you listen to the videos, or come to class, you're all set. Okay? So all the best on Wednesday. I'll see you next time. I will start with test number two. As you recall, we had um, 90 minutes. Practically, there, was, there were 90 minutes in the class, and also 120% max. So if you did five questions very well, you get 100, right? Okay. Question number one, we had um, we had the following request for mesh equations or four equations. We can see one for I1, one for I2, I3, and I4. We can see that we have here um, voltage source. So we have negative 5A is voltage source and so on. It's easy to write this one. Then for this one, we can see that I2 is negative 2 amps. And for I3 and I4, we can also see that we cannot do, we cannot write the equation for each of them because we have a current source here. So what do we do, right? Super mesh. And this is the super mesh. And then the last, then we are still missing one equation. So the missing equation is I4 going down minus I3 going up. So 5 amps is I4 minus I3. So for mesh number one, here is what we have. Um, we have the 5IA. 3 ohm, 12 ohm, and 8 ohms. Each one has its own current. The way we did it, I minus, I minus, I minus. I remember? So this was the question number one. People did well, well on this one. Question number two. People did well on question number two most of the time. I mean, most of the students. Um, because I2 is exactly negative 2. For this one, uh, I don't know. Some stu For these two, I3 and I4, I received totally different equation, which include the five amps. So for some reason, some students added amps and voltages together. Of course, you cannot add it. And so we had um, a problem in number three and number four. But I3 and number four are actually I4 minus I3 equals exactly five. And the last equation is this loop, the super mesh, which is the following. About one third of the class got it right. This one, I would say, maybe also one third of the class. These two people did okay. If you didn't try this one, I totally, I didn't take point away if you didn't try that to compare I3 to IA because we have additional unknown here. But I didn't take any, any points away because I was expecting only four equations. Any question on this one? Um, okay. Question number two. Uh, people did okay, quite okay on that. Uh, the main problems in these two, especially in this one, was the direction of the currents. So you either choose, right, either totally all of them outgoing to make it easy or all of them incoming. So there are some sign issues uh, for some students. Many did okay, but for example, this one is 4ix, this one is vx minus 0 over, v over 1 ohm, 1 kilo ohm, this is v out minus 0 over 1 kilo ohm, this is negative 2 milliamps outgoing, right? Outgoing to. And this one is, of course, v out, which is here, minus 2vx over 1. So that's the. Uh, supernode equation. Um, again, the, there were some sign issues with this, and some students also missed one one a branch. I don't know why, because it was uh, obvious. Okay, so the second one, part B. Write the equation, but do not solve for loop four only, meaning that we try to solve for that. I, there was no issue here that was relatively easy for many students. 
um, negative 2a, right? This is the voltage. The voltage is 2a, 2ia, because the 2 is already, um, is already um, ohms. I mentioned to you. The fact that you multiply 2 by ia does not mean it's current, because the 2 itself is 2 ohms. So this becomes voltage source, right? So we have that, plus 4i4, four four, and plus 25. So negative 2a plus 4i4 four four plus 25. These people did well. So there was almost no issue with this. There were issues with the following op amps. So many students got here 4 volts instead of negative 4 volts. This was a common mistake in almost all, um, almost in ma many, in many uh, exams that I remember. People put here 4 volts instead of negative 4, but the idea was clear. Uh, or some also put here 0. So this was the most common mistake, 4 volts with the negative, the negative sign, and some people put 0 instead of 4. So the current here is 1 amp. This 1 amp flows here, and then to here, and then to here, and then to there. So we know the current here. We know the voltage here, which is 0 volts, right? There is no current flowing inside the op amp. So we have z the, the same I 1 amp is 0 minus V out over 4, right? This current is exactly this current. So 1 amp is exactly 0 minus V out over 4 which gives you a negative 4. So there's some calculation error here. Um, in this part B, in part B, we did the following. If this is 4 volts, what's this? Also 4 volts. So now we can write the equation 5 minus 4 over 1 is 4 minus V out over 4, right? This current is the same as this current, correct? So we have 5 minus 4 over 1 is 4 minus V out over 4. And the result was 0 volts. Sounds strange, right? You get 0 volts in the output, but this was, this was actually the, the result. Um, we asked for Vx here. Assuming V1, V2 are known. Now, if this is V1, this is also V1. If this is V1, this is also V1. So v, Vx is exactly V1. There was nothing to do here, almost nothing to do here. Um, so we have, v, if this is V1, there is, no, there is no current here. This must be V1 also. If this is V1, our assumption was that it's the same on both terminals, right? So this is V1, which means it's also Vx. So the answer is Vx equals V1. For this circuit, we ask what is V out? So what we can say? We can say that if this is V1, right? I can say that V out minus V1 over R2 is the same as V1 minus V2 over R1. Right? It's the same current. So this current, V out minus Vx over R2, is the same as Vx minus V2 over R1. And so once you write it, the, I was looking for this only. So if you didn't do all this, I didn't really care. Okay? I really cared about the, the basic equation that compares or equates the, the, two, the two currents. Okay? So if you did that, you get all the credits. This was question number three. Question number four, find the value of I1. And apparently most students, I should say, I should say most, more than 50%, assume that this is zero. So they say nine divided by 10 equals 0.9 instead of 0.3. Why 0.3? Because the voltage here is 6 volts, right? So the voltage here is also 6 volts, correct? 
If this is 6 volts, this is 6 volts. The current is 9 minus 6 over 10 kilo ohm, which gives you 0.3 milliamps. Okay? So, but, so the, the common mistake here in, in, this, in part one was the assumption that this is 0 volts, which is no, not the right assumption. It's Vy, which is Vy is 6 volts. What is Vy? 6 volts, right? This was no problem. Most students didn't, did it well. I4, um, only few students got it. I4 is the current here, which is 6 volts divided by 40. That's all it is. This is 6 volts, right? If this is 6 volts, this is 6 volts, right? Cool. The whole thing. So 6 volts divided by 40 is exactly I4. Okay, this is summation. We did many of them in the class. It's, um, I asked for Vx, not Vout, okay? I asked for Vx, and yeah, okay. I asked for Vx, and <coughs> Vx is actually voltage divider between these two resistors. If this is three volts, and if 5K and 10K here, Two volts goes on this one because it has the higher resistance, and one volt goes on the five kilo ohm. How do I know? I can find the current. Three volts divided by five plus 15, right? Three volts divided by five plus 10. If this is what? This, so what's the current? 0.2, right? 0.2 milliamps. So this current is 0.2 milliamps, right? If I want to find this voltage, I need to multiply by this resistor times 10. So 0.2 times 10 is exactly 2 volts. So you can do it this way, or voltage divider, whatever you like more, or less. So this was question number four. Um, question number five. This one, yeah. it's a combination of the two because you have here a part which is, in, this is inverting, and this part is non-inverting. So the best way to do it is just to write the equation. Here, um, surprisingly, I received many different solutions. I took the, I, I gave you the, 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 in the test the very, um, the very basic case of Norton, of, of uh, Norton uh, Thevenin, no dependent sources, nothing, right? just independent sources, and ask what is Vx. So, of course, we, we ignore this, right, when we, when we find the op opposite circuit. And obviously, if this is gone, right, let me remove it. If this is gone, I'm ending up with two terminals, open terminals, which are right here. Now, what is V open circuit? This, this voltage here, right? If this is gone, this is open circuit, right? So it's the same as this one, because there is no current here. What is this one? Four volts. So V open circuit is exactly four volts. Okay, yeah. So but why didn't you take into account that you had a topic of four volts on the other resistor? Here? Yeah. I can, but it's not going to help me. I'll get the same result. But if I can do it without it, why should I bother with it, right? You can. You can do, you can write KVL for that and write the equation, you get the same result. But it's not relevant to us because if this is, if there is no current here, I know that this VOC is exactly VX, which is four volts. Yes, you can do it. I short circuit. is four volts divided by three. If I shorten this one, right? If I shorten this, and, and I know that this is four volts, there is current flowing here, which is exactly four divided by three. So it's four over three. Okay? Clear? R7 in. R7 in can be found by the ratio of VOC over ISC or just by looking from the side. 
So you get 3 ohm. If you divide the two, you get 3 ohm. But if you decide to do it the other way, meaning um, shortening, right, the voltage sources, so this will become short, this will become short. And if you are looking from here, what are you going to see? 3 ohm and the short. The rest doesn't matter because it's in parallel with the short, right? Anything with parallel with the short is a short. So you get basically 3 ohm and, and short in series. That's all you have. So the answer is 3 ohm. Either way, we'll get 3 ohm. So once you have that, you have V open circuit and 3, kilo ohm, and three ohm. That's what you get. I, have, I had so many different answers here. I, um, I didn't know where, where these answers came from. But many, many, many different answers. Superposition, people did part of it very, very well. And when it came to the calculation, uh, was not as, well, not as good. So many students was able, were able to see that there is short here and short here. So when you take this voltage source, you can shorten that. When you take this voltage source, you can shorten this. Now, so the, 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 there was clear understanding that that's what needs to be done. The, when it came to calculation, there was a different story. Look what happens on this side. If I have 3 plus 3 in parallel with a short, what is I1? Zero, right? If there is a current flowing here, and the current has this choice to go through a short or 3, 6 ohm, which is resistance, where will it go? To the short. So the current here is zero, right? So I1 is right away zero. Some students got it right, some did not. Um, with respect to that, this was a bit more involved. We had to find I and now to split, to see the split of the current. You can do it in KVL, in KCL, in current divider, many ways to do it. The bottom line is um, it became um, three point Together, 3.665. Here, yeah, this 3.665, and this is the total, which because it's zero plus 0 0.665, zero from here and 0 0.665 from there. Uh, so th this might be um, a more difficult part, uh, algebraically, in in the test maybe, but if you did this, you got quite a bit of credit. Okay. So those who did this well got quite a bit of credit. I tried to bring to give as much partial credit as possible, but of course up to a limit. Any question about that? Okay. <laughs>